Hi, and welcome to the first annual Thanksgiving special. Today, we're going to be making something really good for you. Now, how many times have you been on the road looking for a good meal, but there's only gas stations around? At least once. Well, maybe five times. I'm going to show you how to make a good filling meal for pretty cheap using only things you'd find at the gas station. Today, we're going to be making some meat pockets using only an apple pie, a Slim Jim, some chips or crunch, and well, I know it's no November, but still, I had to get some peanuts for this. So, we're going to be using this as a marinade for a real good flavor, real sweet cherry vanilla flavor on our meat. How good does that sound? Sounds pretty good, but I noticed you're using Coca-Cola. Is that preferred over Pepsi? Oh yes, because only communists drink Pepsi. Let me get this going real quick. Okay, so while you're getting that marinade going, why don't we talk about some creepypasta memories? Oh, that's, those are my favorite. Yes. Um, what are some of your favorite creepypastas? I'd say uh, one of the top ones would be Candle Cove. The way it was written, like a lost message board, it was really creative, really cool. And uh, maybe like um, the Hey Arnold one, like the truth behind it, I did not see that twist coming. Who I don't... knew it was based on a true story? Oh, it's a, of course. I mean, now nowadays we all know that Hey Arnold is based on a true story of a hydrophysalic kid who was sexually abused by his grandfather. Thanks, Creeps with Pasta, for showing us that. Yeah. You know, you can always count on that creeps and pasta and get ready. The, the highest quality of creeps and pasta stories. Always. Is this table clean, by the way? Um. Oh, who cares? Oh, look at that fist. I'm starting to regret this already. So anyway, what's your favorite? Oh, man. You can't see it on camera, probably, but that's fizzling. Oh, that's good. That's going to be... Um, so would you say Candle Cove is a favorite creepy pasta then? Yeah. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite, um, because... Out of all the good ones, there are some. So I'm going to clean this out real quick, get all this apple pie out, because we'll need it for later. I think uh, in terms of ones that scared me shitless the most would probably probably be, um, I told you to smile. Oh yes, that's... I keep forgetting about that one. Yeah. That one probably doesn't get talked about as much, probably because it doesn't have like a, a character that people can kind of latch on to. It's more of like just... A, a sexy one? Right, right. There's no sexy. Uh, well, it doesn't matter if they're sexy or not, because the fans make them sexy afterwards. You gotta remember that. Have you seen that rake fan art? What an ass on that thing. <laughs> Doing something weird on on the settling. Oh my gosh! Look at that. I expect the uh, sections of Slim Jim are just <laughs> they're bubbling. <laughs> they're bubbling up. There's already a layer of fat and grease on the top. It is so appetizing. I've got, it's almost as appetizing as watching you scrape the apple out of that gas station pie. Oh yeah, it's, it's crazy. This is not as gross at all. I was really wondering how you were gonna get the apple out of the pie to put in the meat substance, but now I see that you're just scooping it out. As always, I could use my hands, but you know, we're professionals, so we gotta use a knife. Right. You know, as every car has a of knife. you're still using your hands to scoop it off the knife. <laughs> <laughs> What's like a creepy pasta that made you say, like, yeah, I want to make movies based on these? Well, I think it was really like the first night that I was getting real exposure to creepy pasta, and it was actually you that got me to check them out. Oh yes. Through uh, Mr. Creepy Pasta's channel, um, we l we listened to the Rake first, and I liked that one, but I wasn't super impressed yet. I feel like a few in, we got to the couch. Oh yes. That one, uh, that one really gave me the creeps where the hand comes yeah, out. Yeah, my hands are greasy for some reason. Now we're getting our hands dirty. Come on, it's a candy bar, not a dirty diaper. I don't know why you're... Oh yes, we gotta get these nuts out now. Just like every night. Alright, so we gotta, we're gonna pick these nuts off real quick. So is there any creepy pasta where you thought like... I could do this way better than, than this author. Um, usually that's not my thought process, is that I can do better. It's just more like I have a vision of like how I could turn this into a film. Like um, like with Tiki Toby, it was like, it was like a pretty, felt like a pretty standard creepypasta story, but I kind of had a vision of like 
visuals I could do in terms of turning this into a, a film. And, uh, you know, if you watch that one, there's a lot of, like, I get a little artsy at times. Yeah. So, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly why, but I just felt like there was a lot I could do with that one visually. Oh, yeah, we're getting a lot of nuts in here. I like nuts. Oh, man. Well, look at that marinade. Doesn't that just make your mouth water? Yeah, so it was after that first night of getting exposure to creepypastas that the idea did hit me that, like, some of these would be really cool as, like, an anthology horror film. Uh, you know, so I figured, you know, I should just kind of adapt some of the better ones and or just ones that uh, appealed to me the most. And uh, that's kind of how the movie making thing got started in terms of adapting the creepypastas. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll never forget the first time I heard Jeff the Killer. Oh yeah? Why don't you tell us about it? I was talking to my girlfriend, you know, when she was alive before certain events transpired, things happened, and um, I said, like, hey, this story's kind of scary, kind of freaked me out. And she said, my god, I'm dating a fucking idiot. If you thought that story was scary, oh, uh, she was a character like that. I didn't know there was a girlfriend. You've never told me about her. Better pretty a few times. Did I? You have to remind me. Oh, it's it's history, you know. Things things just happen. It's the first time I cooked in a while, so I kind of need something. Yeah. I thought it'd be going better. Yeah. But you know, things happen. Sometimes you get milk mixed up with bleach. You know, you you've been there before, haven't you? I don't think so. But yeah, you know. So, like, cooking mistakes happen, so, you know, it's, you know, and, and sometimes the police want to ask you questions like, why do you keep the bleach in the fridge next to the milk, and it kind of throws you off your game, you know, and you go, well, I'll right. never, I'll never cook again or anything. Unconstitutional, really. Yeah, yeah. But real. Okay, so, I think there's enough nuts in these pockets. Maybe. I'm kind of rambling like an idiot, as always. I never have enough nuts in my pockets. So, what we're going to do now is, we're going to put these in the pocket. <laughs> it's going so well. I'm so glad we did this. Certain people will be proud of the way that this has turned out. I know I am. At least it's not a milkshake, you know. <laughs> that could have gone way worse. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, I just gotta know, how does this taste? I just gotta get a quick uh, drink of this real quick. It's good. So. I'm so excited to taste test this. <laughs> so now that we have chips out, we got we're gonna use this now as our dessert too. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Okay, so now we're gonna have dessert. <laughs> we're gonna smear these on these chips <laughs> to give you a nice salty, salty crunch. Okay, so like, what's the worst creepy pasta you think you've read? The worst one, and like, you mean like unironically bad? Yeah. No, there, there has been. A few. I feel like the ones that I usually think are the worst are the ones that try to be like edge lord creepy pastas. Yeah. Like, or it's one that I always think of when I think of the worst is one called the dating game. I guess yeah, that one's not good. Like you just one. tried so hard to be edgy and. It's not remotely scary, it's just like, like... It's like, I graduated middle school, you have to do more than be edgy to get my entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that one just really sucked. Oh man, don't you just look good. Oh. Don't you just not regret any life choices leading up to this? I definitely don't regret letting you take charge of this Thanksgiving special. Oh man, that one's burnt too, I'm just gonna... So, well, don't use the burnt one. That would be disgusting. Yeah, we don't like that. We gotta get these chips nice and good. So now, I think we're getting close. Mm -hmm. I think we're making some good stuff. We got our chips spread with apple chunks, and we got our meat chunk. Look at that! Look, uh, oh my god! Look at all those peanuts in there. Oh my god! And we got our marinated meat. That there's not definitely not cat hair in there. No, there's not. definitely not cat hair all over the place. I definitely didn't see cat hair sticking on your fingers while you're stuffing that pocket. <laughs> so what's the one thing you want people to know about this Jeff the Killer movie? 
Uh, Toby versus Jeff? Yeah. Um, well, that, it's just... One, it's a sequel to Tiki Toby, so it does continue his, uh, his character a bit. He's basically getting a second chance to uh, redeem himself throughout the film. Um, kind of, and Jeff is sort of like, I guess, like the main villain of this one. Of course, yes. I kind of view it like Slenderman was the main villain of the last movie, and then this one is more about Jeff being the villain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, are you ready to dig in? <sighs> Do you want me to answer that honestly? <laughs> okay. So, let's try these. I'm pretty sure they're going to be delicious and not all nasty. So, you ready? I only agreed to one bite. I will make that perfectly clear. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so, I tasted it. I didn't say anything about swallowing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I swallowed it. <laughs> no, no. Oh, it's like an old oh, hot dog. <laughs> I regret having the sense of taste right now. Hold on. We're not done yet. We gotta try dessert. Oh my god. Well, I'm just gonna wipe my fingers off on the table. Oh. Salt and vinegar chips with some apple spread. Not bad. Not good, but better so, than that. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much of a success was this? Um, what is a 10 like a total success? Yes, and then a 1 is a mild success. Okay. <laughs> but either way, it's a success. Yes, that's what we're doing. That's what we do here. I'm going to give it a negative 5. Yes. I'd have to give it a 1 because technically it is a meal, as promised, somewhat. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's just that easy to cook stuff. Yeah. So, next time you're out on the road, next time you're at a meal, don't take my advice. 